Hey, what's up guys? Darkworker here. And for today's video, I'm going to talk about how did I reach Challenger in solo queue and finished rank 18 in season 1 of the Europe server. So, for the first tip, it's going to be Meta Heroes. You need to play Meta Heroes. If you want to grind and want to reach a high rank, you definitely have to play the best champions possible uh, for every role. So, for patch 2.2a, I will talk about the best champions I think um, you can use to grind yourself up to challenger for each role. First role, it's going to be the Baron lane. Akali, super strong! This champion just needs to get nerfed, she's just way too strong. Unbalanced. So, extremely strong laning phase, good in team fights, and insane 1 vs 9 potential. Then we have Darius, the man himself, Noxus Might, oh boy, dunking machine. I guarantee you guys, if you master this champion, check out one of my videos I made for him recently. MVP, 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 solo queue, every game, getting insane stats on him, learn this champion. He is very strong in the laning phase, insane in team fights, and his 1 vs 9 potential is crazy. You get one reset, you get your passive out, one reset, ultimate, 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 true damage, they just all die. Darius is incredible. Next one, Camille, my, <laughs> she's my main champion in the new season right now. I have a 61% 61, 61 win rate with her in solo queue. Which I would say is pretty solid, 61. If you have like a 54 win rate on average in total, that's very good win rate for challenger. But it depends on the amount of games obviously. If you have like 1k games and 54% win rate, that's extremely good. Yet that's already insane. She is a great split pusher, solid in lane, great team fighting, her catch potential is insane, her mobility is also insane. Damn, she stacked. Play her. Also, her new skin is pretty damn good. Next one. I would say Fiora. Fiora in the right hand if you want trick pony this champion. Her carry potential is pretty insane. Uh, you need good micromanagement. Always hit the vitals, no all matchups. You have to snowball in the early game, definitely. But if you master this, you will just snowball like crazy. She is extremely strong. Um, as a split pusher, not that strong in team fights, but if, once she gets going, she will be really good. But obviously, for her, you need a lot of games to master her and be able to get challenger. But there are Fiora one trick ponies who reached challenger last season. Next one, mid lane, the most broken role. If you want to get a freebie and grind yourself up super quickly to challenger, the mid lane role is just so good. You have Katarina, broken, Galio, broken, Corky, broken, uh, Diana, broken, and Oriana, also very good. So let's talk about each champion really quick. Katarina, one reset, she just wipes the entire team. Absolutely, mind-blowingly broken, S, S, S tier, no clickbait, she's just absolutely broken in high elo. The, when you master her, she's just insane. Galio, great team fighting, great poke. Great utility, cocky, high damage, uh, a decent amount of mobility. He is just insane in team fights. You get package, you have three core items, you can carry a team fight super hard. You just need good positioning and hit your skills, obviously. Oriana, great utility, great team fight damage. What else? Insane wave clear. I, I guess that's pretty important. Wave clear management on Oriana. That's going to be a point later on. Wave management. And Diana. In the right hands, if you play Diana good, she is broken, broken, too strong. Okay, next one, jungle. I think uh, pretty obvious picks are Lee Sin, Evelyn, both are super strong. Shivana decent, Mundo decent, Javan great utility, decent damage, Wukong, Olaf. But I guess if you really want to, uh, if you are really sweaty, go for Lee Sin and Evelyn, those two are super broken. ADC, 
Kaisa, Saya, Ezreal are, in my opinion, the strongest three ADCs right now. Uh, Kaisa is just insane. Saya, I mean, Ezreal with Muraman is also insane. You could also go Corky, Misfortune. Those are decent picks, but I would say Kaisa, Saya, Ezreal are the strongest three ADCs right now. Then, supports Jenna, Braum, Alyssa are, in my opinion, the three strongest solo queue picks. You could also go for Lulu. Doesn't matter. Uh, step number two. It's going to be the hero pool. For example, let's say you are Baron Lane Main. I recommend you guys don't be a one trick pony. Play three champions. Three champions. It's going to be super important. So you, if you, if your one trick pony is getting banned. Like for example, I know people that are challenger level on Fiora for example. But on any other champions, they are just diamonds. So whenever they are not on Fiora, it's just out to lose. So you want to build up your champion pool for your main road. Three, in my opinion. And four, filling. Um, I mean, now you have road queue, so the likelihood of you having to fill is pretty low. But I would still say for every... Off road, you want to main, uh, you want to learn two champions at least that are also in the meter category. I just told you. So, for example, okay, I'm a Baron Lane main. I will main Akali, Darius, Camille. I'm so good already. I forgot to mention Gragas is also pretty good. So those three, for example, and then, okay, my off road. Oh, I'm four jungle. What can I pick? I can still pick Listen. I can still pick Evelyn. Oh boy. Even if someone else is on Baron Lane, so I can fill in jungle and play it super well. So that will increase the likelihood of you improving your win rate. And one game doesn't matter, it's all about the consistency and your average, average win rate in like 100 games, 200 games. It's, it all comes down to your average. You just want to improve your average win rate and your consistency at winning games. Or in general just being consistent and not inting. Next point is going to be objective control. This one is going to be so important for a lot of you people because you guys make so many mistakes. I just have to say, when I meet um, low diamonds, emerald players sometimes, oh boy, I'm just, my mind is just blowing up. Number one, dragon. Inferno, ocean, cloud, mountain. That's the order in my opinion. Inferno is the strongest and when you're playing a split pusher you want to come for that Inferno Dragon and help your teammates out to contest it. It's an 8% bonus damage buff. I saw someone tweeted that the Cloud Dragon has on average the highest percentage but it really depends. I think on split pushers it's really good or on ADCs that want to kite but in general I would still say Inferno, then Ocean, then Cloud and then Mountain. So since we're talking about objectives, I will mainly focus about um, the split pushers when it comes to dragons because they need to learn taking the first turret is also better than trying to fight for mountain dragon. Split pushers are in general weak at the first dragon. They want to scale, they want to farm up, they want to get their first turret. It opens up the map, you can shove the way farther and then you can get more gold and try to roam, help your teammates out, stuff like that. Next one, Baron. Baron is the objective you want to do when you want to end the game, obviously. But, you have to be careful guys. Don't throw the game trying to force Baron too hard. And also get Baron when you are so ahead that you can easily fight it. What you want to do is, if you kill the jungler, you can easily force the Baron or if you're super ahead, you can also start the Baron, ward around the Baron buff, see when the enemies are approaching. If they're not approaching, free Baron. If they are and have no jungle, just take it. You have the jungler with smite. But, but, if the jungler is up, usually you want to just turn on them. You are ahead, just turn on them. They come in. You jump on them, you kill them, you're so ahead, you get Baron, you finish the game. 
so barren and also next one oh this is hurting me so much turret control oh boys getting turret is better than kills turrets are the way to win the game most of the times turrets are better than dragons except for the infernal drag but turrets are in general so much better they give you a lot of gold and gold lead means better team fighting more items stuff like that also, another tip when it comes to Herald and Turrets. Come on, you supports. I know you, look at you. You roam away from your bot turret to go for the Herald. Three men on Herald. Bot lane, ADCs alone. Enemy jungle ignores Herald. He just dives one versus three, your bot laner, your ADC. He dies, you lose the first turret. And the whole point of getting Herald is securing the first turret gold that's the whole point of the herald so don't roam unless you shoved in the wave super hard and usually unless you see the enemy support is roaming to herald as well just stick to your adc and don't int okay number four micro management micro management in lane what the, what do I mean with that? This is going to be super important um, depending on your matchup obviously. You want to let's say track the enemy cooldowns, track the warding positions. Also pay attention not only micro wise, also macro wise where the enemy jungler is. People are so self absorbed into their lane they don't think about okay what is the jungler going to do where did he start where is he going to end up ganking first am i playing too aggressive in my lane am i going to get ganked pretty soon because i'm so over aggressive am i getting ganked or dive because the enemy managed to freeze my lane create a huge wave which is going to crash in and they dive me one versus two you have to think about that stuff as well it's super important especially cooldown tracking like i said for abilities and knowing the limits when you can jump in or trade it's going to be super important obviously when, I, when i'm telling you micromanagement it means also zoning people in the lane freezing the wave in the lane and also last hitting correctly that's going to be super important what the hell is micromanagement wise maybe your combos practice your combos in practice mode for kali practice your combos Fiora, Camille, Hard Champions, practice the combos, um, animation cancelling, maximize the amount of damage you can do by cancelling your auto attacks with another ability so your animation is more smoother and cleaner. For Fiora and Akali that's going to be super important for high skill cap champions. Those champions benefit so much from micromanagement. Next one. Um, I was already talking about wave control and it's going to be wave control not only in the lane but also in general. That's going to be super important to secure turret and uh, create enough pressure on the map to create 5 versus 4 situations because someone else has to defend the wave. So when we are talking about the laning phase wave management in some cases you want to hard off the wave so you make it harder for them to last it. For example, against Narsus, you can do that. Or if you're playing a hard matchup, you want the wave to be frozen into your favor. Let them push it in and then freeze the wave by just last hitting or just last hitting the ranged minions. So you can stack up a huge wave and then it will be super hard because the enemy always has to be overextended in the lane and you can freely farm up and they are easily getting ganked because they shoved the wave in and you are freezing it. And when it comes to overall macro wave management, I think when you want to split push, sometimes you want to just create a slow push to join a team fight. You create a slow push and then go for the objective and by that time a huge wave will be created and it will, be, it will crash into the opponent's uh, turret. How do you do that? Just kill the ranged minions instead of all minions. And then it will slowly push into your into the into your favor into their lane and what else you can also hard push obviously uh hard push with a split pusher 
and then TP in, create enough pressure, or as a mid laner, you always want to clear your wave before a team fight because if your wave is up and you lost the team fight, the opponents can use that wave to kill the turret. Or the other way, you're winning a team fight, you have no wave, you can kill the turret. It's because you messed up the wave management. But if you play it correctly, you have a wave and it's slow pushing while you're winning a team fight. By the time you win that team fight, you have the wave crashing into the turret and you can use it to get one turret or maybe even two turrets. So wave management is really important to secure objectives and create enough pressure on the map in general. Next one. I put in matchups. Okay. Learn all matchups for your main champions. How can you play in a mat in a bad matchup to improve your win rate? Okay. Like I said, when it comes to matchups and one trick ponying one champion, you need to master that champion. I would just I mean since I'm in a Baron laner, I would just mention uh, in the case of Fiora. Okay, Fiora is really strong and oppressive in the early game. You want to dominate everyone, right? But there are some bad matchups. I would say Akali, obnoxious. Darius can be tricky and Camille can be also annoying. So you really want to practice your hard matchups to increase your win rate because I expect you to win your easy matchups. Those are the matchups Fiora against Nasus. You want to bully them, win that lane, snowball. But if you're playing a hard matchup, you also want to play consistent and not int. That's going to be super important. Never int, play consistently, play safe. And yeah, that's going to be it. Just practice matchups. The more games you have, the more experience you will have, and the easier it will be for you to win bad matchups. Maybe ask a friend who is also good. Hey, can we practice Fiora against Akali? We played like five times in the early game, and I will see how I, I can improve my laning phase. Improving your laning phase will immediately increase your win rate because you will have better and consistent games. And even if your teammates are doing bad, um, if you're doing well, that's already good enough. Sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. You just have to accept it. But as long as you're playing well, you can improve and you can also win more games. And since I'm talking about improving, I guess you step seven. Step seven would be look at your own mistakes. Watch replays. I tell you that one. People are so self-absorbed. They have their egos which is just way too big, just way too big, come on. They think, I'm Mr. Perfect, I'm too good, I make no mistakes. If someone is feeding, it's out to lose, it's only their fault, it's only their fault. I played it perfectly, zero mistakes, no you're wrong, you did mistakes, 100%. And even challenger players, it's very, 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 very rare for the top players to make zero mistakes, playing it absolutely perfectly. If you watch a replay and let someone else spectate it, I can guarantee you guys, he will find mistakes laning phase wise, uh, using your combos, um, maybe not perfectly, rotation, macro management, how you team fight, stuff like that. There's always a way to improve. So watch your replays, check out what could I have done better, how could I have played it better, and in which way could I prevent it the game to turn out that bad. I mean, some cases, everyone is feeding, you play well, you still end up losing, but maybe you could still, instead of 5-0, you could have gone 7-0. And even if you end up losing, in total, you can improve your gameplay. And like I said, it comes down to the average win rate in total. It doesn't matter if you lose 10 games, but if your average win rate is 55 in 200 games, 300 games, 500 games, 1k games, you will be high elo guaranteed. But most people, oh, I played so well, it's his fault, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm crying, blah, cry, write too much in chat, blah, 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 blah. I'm crying. Okay, since I'm talking about that one, mentality, oh boy. I mean, I have to admit, I don't have the greatest mentality as well. I try to stay positive, but if you're getting trolled one time, two times, three times, four times, sometimes you just get, it gets too much and you just end up losing. 
you just end up losing it, you get tilted, you flame. Usually, don't try to flame, that's the most important step. Stay positive, try to win, never surrender games. Even if the game looks extremely bad, the amount of times people get too overconfident and throw the game is absolutely mind-blowing. So, just stay positive, try to win. Like I said, on average, the game is designed for you to not win every game. It's designed to be a 50-50 game. If you can improve your win rate to 54, that's already great. The top one player, random, has a 54% win rate. I had a 54% win rate in the last season as well. Unless you play duo, trio, having a 53, 54, 55 win rate is already insane. It's a solo queue only. Um, yeah, I said it's solo queue only, right? Step 8, I guess. If you don't want to play solo queue only, then I definitely recommend you guys play duo queue. Make, make your life easier. Like, the game is a MOBA, it's designed to be a 5 vs 5 game, it's not a 1 vs 9 game. If you have good friends you want to play with, ask them, play duo queue, play trio queue, have fun, go in voice, play good combos like mid duo or ADC, bot lane, stuff like that. And if you use voice, it will also improve your win rate obviously. And playing with friends, it keeps your mental better, you flame less. You only have one, yeah, you have one troll less or two trolls less, so your mindset will be better in general. And yeah, you don't necessarily have to play solo queue. The game is not meant to be a solo queue only game. But yeah, I guess that's come to it. Wait, let me think real quick. Did I miss anything? Did I miss anything? How did I get Challenger? I spammed Fiora, Camille. And when I was jungler, no, I spent uh, Darius and Gragas as well. And when I was playing off row, I would just go jungle. And jungle is a pretty good, pretty good role to carry. Jungle mid lane. I was spamming Shivana, win streak, win streak, win streak, win streak. But I also, obviously, I had a lot of lo uh, loose streaks as well. That's normal. Just accept it. Just accept it. As long as you play consistently, you play well, you will improve. Watch replays. That's probably going to be super important and your ego can't be too high. Unless you're rank 1, you're the best player in the world, your ego can't be high. Because you're still bad. That's just a fact. I'm not the... Like, I still do a lot of mistakes. I can still improve myself a lot. I watch replays, I make voice over it. Voice, uh, voice over, over my gameplays. I still see a lot of mistakes, so definitely. If I can see a lot of mistakes... You guys can see a lot of mistakes in your gameplays as well. So, anyways, that's going to it for the gameplay. Hope you guys enjoyed this, yeah, this guide. Leave a like, subscribe, activate the notification bell if you guys don't want to miss out on any future videos. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.